8's Metacosis Perfect Schnellis, where medicine makes perfect sense, let's continue our playlist called 5 Minute Review. Another nephrology video, it's time to talk about acute post streptococcal glomerulonephritis, the first video in the nephritic syndrome series. In previous videos, we discussed the nephrotic syndromes such as minimal change disease, focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, membranous nephropathy, diabetic nephropathy, and amyloidosis. Then we talked about the nephritic nephrotic syndromes such as diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis and membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis. This is my playlist. Please watch these videos in order, especially the nephrology ones. These were nephrotic syndrome. These two are nephritic nephrotic. A tale of three calendars. Your kidney should be normal. It should not let any protein in the urine. It should not let blood in the urine. Nephrotic syndrome, you're letting lots of protein in the urine. In nephritic syndrome, itis means inflammation. Your kidney is literally bleeding into the urine. Nephrotic syndrome is a cause of hypoproteinemia due to proteinuria. This is called protein losing nephropathy. Do I get edema from this? Absolutely. It's pitting dependent transdate due to decreased uncatic pressure. Nephrotic, serotic, CHF, all of them are causes of edema. Generalized edema, that is. Transdate, that is. Dependent pitting edema, that is. The difference is nephrotic syndrome can also cause periorbital puffiness and periorbital edema. CHF and cirrhosis do not. Nephritic has itis, which means inflammation, which means hypercellularity under the microscope, which means blood in the urine. Do you remember nephrotic syndrome? High protein in my urea, low protein in my emia, edema and hyperlipidemia. How about nephritic? Hypertension, hematuria. But that's not it. We have seven features. So four features for nephrotic, seven features for nephritic. What are the seven features? Hypertension, hematuria, jugular venous distension, oliguria, mild edema and proteinuria, elevated BUN and creatinine. This is azotemia. Don't forget my periorbital puffiness. Nephritic has itis, inflammation, therefore blood in the urine. Where did it come from? From the kidney. You can see red blood cell casts if it's coming from the tubules and dysmorphic red blood cells if it's coming from the glomeruli. Inflammation has what? Tons of neutrophils, hypercellularity. When I lose lots of blood in the urine, I can get anemia if it's really bad. Limited proteinuria versus the nephrotic range proteinuria seen in nephrotic syndrome. My kidney is literally shedding tears of blood and therefore I have azotemia, which means increased B and creatinine in the blood. The stigmata of acute renal failure are going to be visible on the patient's exam. And when the kidney is toast, there is no urine output. When the kidney is toast, there is salt retention, water retention, hypertension, jugular venous distension, and this is probably the cause of the periorbital edema. In some cases, there is immune complex deposition, which means antigen antibody. Where? In your kidney. Stuck. Hey, medicosis, uh, my patient's urine looks red. Does that mean that there is red blood cells? Not necessarily. It could be just a pigment if I'm eating too much beet. It could be myoglobin after running a marathon or after I get crushed in a car accident between an old sedan and a dark red 1998 Ford F-150 pickup. Does it have to be dark red? How about blue? No, dark red because of myoglobin, doofus. And this was called crush injury. How about if I have intravascular hemolytic anemia? You can get hemoglobinuria, very toxic to your kidney. Moreover, just because you have blood in the urine doesn't necessarily mean that it's the kidney's fault. It could be the ureter's fault. It could be the bladder's fault, like bladder cancer. How do I know that's coming from the kidney? You need some casts and some dysmorphic red blood cells. In other words, do not just trust the urine dipstick because it can be positive with hemoglobin or myoglobin. How do I know that the patient has true hematuria with actual red blood cells? Examine it under the microscope. Dysmorphic is coming from the kidney, usually glomerulus, red blood cell cast, usually tubules. In acute post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, we have inflammation of the glomeruli caused by immune complex deposition, usually subepithelial, which means beneath your epithelium, underneath the podocytes. Okay, and look at this hump, hump, hump. Hump, we call it humpy bumpy. Not to be confused with humpty dumpty. These are the diseases that cause nephrotic syndrome and these are the ones that cause nephritic syndrome. We are here today. 
What do we see here in post Streptococcal glomeruli nephritis? Diffuse, which means all of your glomeruli are toast. You have hypercellular glomeruli and your glomeruli are affected for sure, sometimes the tubules too. A story of two strains of the bacteria Streptococci. There is a strain that causes pharyngitis. And then after the pharyngitis, I can have rheumatic fever or acute post Streptococcal glomeruli nephritis. Okay. But if I am infected with another strain, that causes skin infection, such as scarlet fever, for example, such as impetigo, etc. This strain can only go to the kidney, acute post streptococcal glomerular nephritis. This strain can never go to the heart causing rheumatic fever. And this point is very important. If I had pharyngitis, heart or kidney. If I had skin infection, only kidney. This is Streptococcus pyogenes. Don't forget it's coagulase negative, therefore it can spread all over your body. One of the substances secreted by Streptococci are Streptolysin O. O, Streptococcus, and it causes lysis of tissue. And it's just O because there's Streptolysin S, Streptolysin O, etc. Therefore, your body will form antibodies against the Streptolysin O. And now we have anti-Streptolysin O antibody, or ASO. If you have this, it means that you have encountered group A streptococcal infection or strep pyogenes. But please be careful. Cholesterol, which is found in the fat, in your skin, or subcutaneous tissue, irreversibly binds and inhibits streptolysin O, which means you could have a strep infection, but since your skin is inflamed and destroyed by skin infection caused by streptococcus, you will not see elevated ASO in your blood. Very important point. So just because the patient has negative ASO does not necessarily exclude acute post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. The reason why it's negative is because the kid had scarlet fever or impetigo or any strep skin infection before the kidney disease. That's why it's negative. There are a bunch of PhDs running around that cannot grasp this basic fact. Oh, the kid just has negative ASO. No, kid, you don't have acute post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Just go home and enjoy life. Shut up. Your blood is made of what? Red blood cells and plasma, which has proteins. If you lose proteins in the urine, nephrotic. If you lose blood, nephritic. This is the kidney histology. We have a beautiful basement membrane. We call it glomerular basement membrane. On the inside, we have the endothelium. On the outside, we have the podocytes or epithelium. Acute streptococcal glomerular nephritis. What's going on? Immune complex. What does that mean? Antigen antibody. And they are stuck and deposited were subepithelia beneath the epithelium underneath the podocyte you see that podocyte yeah in acute post streptococcal you'll find the immune complexes here oh and they make what they make lumps oh humpty dumpty if you remember my previous video on membranoproliferative it was either subendothelium not subepithelial, or it could be intramembranous. So the location is very important. Where would I find it? Here, subepithelial, in cases of acute post streptococcal. Freaking streptococcus is a bacteria, therefore, it can activate the alternative complement pathway, causing what? Consumption of my complement proteins, and you can get hypocomplementemia. Why? Because you're consuming your complement. Let's review. Here is minimal change disease. Remember the kid and remember Hodgkin's. Remember the excellent prognosis. Then we have focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. It's not as good of a response. Remember HIV, heroin, parvo B19, and sickle cell. Then we have membranous, remember renal vein thrombosis, DVTPE, subepithelial, hepatitis B and C. Next, we have diabetic nephropathy, remember hyaline arteriolo sclerosis, remember Klimstein Wilson nodule, mesangial sclerosis, papillary necrosis, don't forget to treat me and give me ACE inhibitors. Amyloid nephropathy could be primary amyloidosis or secondary amyloidosis. Remember the apple green biofringence and the Congo red stain. Diffuse proliferative is nephrotic nephritic. Remember lupus. Remember subendothelial. Membranoproliferative type 1 is subendothelial. Hepatitis B, C, cryoglobulinemia. Type 2 goes into the membrane. C3 nephritic factor. Please pay close attention. There are two diseases in nephritic syndrome that have the following scenario. A kid 
develops upper respiratory tract infection. Cough, sneezing, all kinds of stuff. And then give it some time, and before you know it, there is blood in the urine, nephritic syndrome. Now the question is, how long did it take? If it took you one, two days, something like this, this was IgA nephropathy. So between this and this, there was just one, two, three days. But if it took me one, two, three weeks, this is post streptococcal glomerular fluids. How do you remember it, medicosis? Easy. One, two, three is delayed, right? Yeah, that's why it's called post. After delay it, baby. Post streptococcal. Let's go. Nephritic syndrome. Yes, I can start with pharyngitis or skin infection. And then one to three weeks later, I develop nephritic syndrome, blood in the urine. Weeks, not days. That's why it's post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Don't forget group A, beta hemolytic strep pyogenase, hypertension, hematuria, fever, and proteinuria, and periorbital puffiness. Diagnosis, streptococci secrete what? DNA, so anti-DNAs. They secrete streptolysin O, therefore anti-streptolysin O. But be careful, if we started with a skin infection, cholesterol is gonna destroy this and you will not find ASO. But if the kid started with pharyngitis and no skin disease, you'll find a positive ASO. Light microscopy, neutrophil proliferation, hypercellular glomeruli. Electron microscopy with immune fluorescence, subepithelial immune complex, lumpy bumpy. Prognosis in kids, awesome. In adults, it could be okay, or they could develop irreversible chronic kidney failure. Oops. Treatment is supportive. Give me penicillin G or penicillin V because this is a gram positive coccus, and if I have hypertension, treat it. If you like this video, you will enjoy my renal physiology course. Comes with 10 videos at medicosisperfectsnatus.com. I also have an acid base course and a brand new pharmacokinetics pharmacodynamics course. You can get a 30% discount by using promo code pancreas. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website, download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.